Hello and welcome to the Virtual Transfer College Fair for all Virginia students sponsored by the Virginia Association of Collegiate Registrars and Admissions Counselors and StriveScan. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started as people are coming into the room. Uh, you can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphones are off, so the panelists can't see or hear you, so get comfortable and just enjoy all of the information that will be presented here in a few minutes. This is one of many different sessions happening, so be sure to check out the full schedule, strivescan.com slash Virginia. And also, that's the same website to access the recording of this session or any others that you want to see later. They'll be available within about a week. Again, strivescan.com slash Virginia. And I'll put that on the screen at the end of the presentation session today so you can see those websites again in case you didn't get them or that one website, strivescan.com slash Virginia. This is the order. We are in session A3, so you will be hearing from those six institutions in the upper right, starting with George Mason University here in a moment. So again, use the Q&A button to ask questions of any of the reps. Good idea that if you have a question for a specific institution, to name it in your question so that they know it's addressed to them. All right, that's enough of the housekeeping. I'm going to drop off here and hand it over to George Mason University. Hello, everybody. My name is Christina Vidalis. I am one of the assistant directors of admission at George Mason University. I am also a Mason grad, and I was a transfer to Mason. So I am just slightly biased when I say Mason is an excellent institution to transfer to, but hopefully you will not just take my word for it and you will check us out even more after today's session. To kind of kick things off and give you a welcome hello to Mason, have some quick facts to start off. So Mason is located in Fairfax, Virginia, and we are the largest public research university in Virginia. We have over 25,000 undergraduate students, and if you add grad students on top of that, we're going to have over 37,000 students, the whole lot. And our transfer students are a large number of that population. We are a very transfer-friendly institution, and every semester our incoming transfer class is usually around the same size or even larger than our incoming freshman class. So you would be in good company at Mason as a transfer student. While our main campus is in Fairfax, Virginia, which is just a hop, skip, and a jump away from Washington, D.C., we do have other campuses that students can take. Whoops. There we go. Okay, we're back. We do have some other campuses that students can go and study at if they would like, and they are as local as our Prince William campus or our Arlington campus or as far away as Songdo, South Korea. My favorite campus that I'll give a shout out to is a partnership with the Smithsonian Zoo. So Front Royal Virginia is home to the Smithsonian Mason School of Conservation, along with many different endangered species that they're working on conservation efforts with, my favorite being the maned wolf, but red pandas and cheetahs are also some favorites among the students as well. When it comes to academics at Mason, there are tons of majors to choose from. We have over 80 different programs that span from STEM to the humanities and social sciences and to the visual and performing arts. So no matter what you might be interested in studying, the odds are Mason is going to have it. If you're looking to add some more depth to your study, you can also add one of our 200 different minors and concentrations. And we also have accelerated master's programs. So if you're looking to get a graduate degree, you can do so even quicker through one of those programs at Mason. There are a lot of different ways that you can transfer to Mason, and we don't have quite enough time to delve into all the depths of each one of them. So I'm going to give you a quick, brief overview on each, and there are, I'll tell you just a little bit about the ways you can get even more information about each of these application processes. For our regular transfer pathway, this is open to basically everybody. If you are coming to us from a Virginia Community College school, a four-year institution, if you are coming from in Virginia, outside of Virginia, wherever it may be, you can apply through the regular transfer pathway. Guaranteed admissions is for students who are at one of the Virginia Community College Schools, VCCS for short, and who are earning their associate's degree. 
And then our advanced program is even a little bit more of a narrow field as well because it's for students who are from the Northern Virginia Community College system. We really try and make sure that your transfer process to Mason is as smooth and stress-free as possible. So I want to highlight some of the most important resources that we have available to students to help them out through that process. The first thing that we have is our transfer guides, and they are broken down by each individual major at Mason, and they tell you, hey, these are the courses that we recommend for your specific major. They even have the specific course numbers for students who are at one of the Virginia Community College schools. We also, a step further than that, have our transfer credit matrix, which is a list of how your courses will transfer to Mason potentially. For any student who's taking classes within the Virginia Community College system, it will be a comprehensive record of every single course that we accept. For students who are coming from a non-VCCS school, then it will be a historical record. So what has transferred over in the past? Built off of that matrix, we have our Transfer Credit Explorer, and it takes those classes and it plugs them into a degree worksheet. That way you can see exactly where you are at when it comes to your um, progression towards a degree at Mason. So it'll show you what classes you would have earned credit for already and how many more you would have left upon transferring so you can get an idea of how long it would take. We also have an Office of Transfer Services for students to utilize if you want to meet one-on-one with a counselor to discuss your unique situation, and we have appointments for that Monday through Friday. And then we also have our Office of Military Services, where if you're coming in with any type of military background or affiliation and you have military education benefits you'll be using, that's a great resource to utilize as well. Mason is still working remotely in many ways, so these are just some of the ways you can connect with us if in a virtual manner. That transfer office I mentioned earlier, it's doing virtual appointments, and you can meet with us over the phone or through a video conference. Through um, The registration is on the website in the very top bullet. We also have a virtual site where if you would like to take a virtual tour of campus or if you would like to take advantage of a full information session that goes into all of the different application processes, you can either watch our pre-recorded session or you can register for one of our live sessions, all from the comfort of your own home. Finally, we are really here to help you when it comes to your transfer process at Mason, and we would love to connect with you. So if you have any questions about transferring to Mason, please feel free to shoot us an email, give us a call, or sign up for one of those transfer appointments so that we can help you out on your process. And it has been wonderful chatting with you folks, and if you have any questions, let me know and stick them in the q and I'll be happy to help. Thank you, Christina. And I will share the order again, uh, the institutions that will be presenting in this session as uh, our next representative gets ready again. As Christina said, drop any questions you have, not just for George Mason University, but for any others using the Q&A button uh, on your controls here as you're in this webinar. Next up now, representative from Sweetbriar College. Hi everybody, I am Jesse Pugh. I'm one of the senior admissions counselors here at Sweetbriar. Um, so got a quick little slideshow for you all. Um, if you have any questions, again, drop those in the chat. Happy to get those answered for you. Um, so Sweetbriar is an all women's college. We were founded in 1901 and our first graduation, or graduation happened in 1906. Uh, we're a small school. We have about 400 students and our average class size is about 10. So lots of great one-on-one -on -one attention from professors um, and 99% of our students live on campus, including all of most of our transfer students in that number. And a lot of our faculty and staff live on campus as well. So you might be invited over for dinner and lecture instead of having to stay in the classroom the whole time um, when it's safe to do so in non-COVID times. Um, we are dedicated to preparing young women to go on and be leaders after graduation, and we have reworked our um, academic curriculum to reflect that. And I'll go over that a little bit more in just a few minutes. Um, we are on about 3,000 acres, so there's lots of wide open space. We have 18 miles of trails on campus, so if you like to get out, be in nature, we can definitely accommodate that for you. And we also have a 130 acre equestrian center um, directly on campus. So if you're interested in riding horses or if you just want to go up and pet the horses, um, you can do that. It is right on um, just off the main campus. Um, we have, as I mentioned, a unique 
um, academic program. So we updated our calendar system. So instead of a typical 15 week semester, we've broken that up into two sessions. So you start your fall semester with a three week course. So you take one class every day for three weeks, um, have your final for that class, and then you start your 12 week session. Um, where you take four or five classes like you would at any other institution during a typical semester. We then have winter break, we come back in the spring, we start another 12 week session and then we finish up the, three, uh, the semester with another three week. Um, those three week sessions are really great for internship opportunities, study abroad opportunities, um, independent research opportunities, or if you just have a class that you're really dreading taking, you want to be able to focus all of your energy on that one class, you can usually take that class during the three weeks. So that's all you have to focus on. Um, that's something I would do for math classes. I'm not a math person. Um, so definitely do that for those classes. We offer 20 undergraduate programs, um, including pre-med, um, pre-vet, and a few other uh, pre-professional programs. We also have a Master's of Arts in Teaching, which is a one-year additional program. So if you're interested in teaching, um, you can do the Master's program and graduate with your Bachelor's and your Master's um, in just one more year um, instead of having to go for another two or three years to get your Master's. Um, we also did our uh, redid our um, general studies requirements. So now um, we have our leadership core. As transfer students, if you're coming in with your associate's degree, you do not have to do the, tr the leadership core program. You're still welcome to take those classes. They're all interdisciplinary and have some great um, real world applications. Um, one of them is called dollars and cents. So it's about personal finance and uh, understanding economics just enough that you can you know, understand what they're talking about, the Dow and the NASDAQ. Um, and the news every night. Um, but as transfer students, again, if you have your associate's degree, um, the leadership core will, will be fulfilled for you, so you don't have to worry about that. We also have an ABET accredited engineering program. Um, we are one of two all women's colleges to have that accreditation. Um, and we have a fantastic academic resource center that provides free tutoring to all of our students, um, as well as if you have any um, accessibility concerns, um, accessibility services is housed there as well. Um, career services um, is fantastic. Our alumni are great about helping current students find jobs um, after graduation as well as internships while they're still in school. And about 90% of our um, students are either employed or have gone on to graduate school within a year or sorry, six months of graduation. We also offer $2,000 in grants uh, for, edu for um, engaged learning for students. So um, you learn how to write grants as part of our core curriculum. Um, and you can request um, the two, whole $2,000 at once, or you can break it up into $5,000 here, $1,000 there. Um, if you need a, you know, a piece of equipment for a research project you're working on, if you need help um, to pay for a flight to study abroad, you can use that $2,000 for whatever you'd like. We just have to write the grant to get it approved. We have lots of leadership opportunities and lots of and everything is open to transfer students as well. Um, beekeeping is very popular. We have beehives on campus um, as well as a vineyard. So if you're interested in um, viticulture, agriculture, um, we have a greenhouse on campus and we are actually growing the vegetables in there to be used in our dining hall. So immediate farm to table food. Um, we have fantastic food selections on campus. Um, and then we also have great club sports. Um, our environmental club is very active. Um, we have a BSA as well as a Latinx student um, alliance group on campus. And then something that's unique about Sweetbriar is that every student is automatically a part of our student government association. So um, every time there's a meeting, if you, even if you don't go, you'll still get the minutes for it and um, can be kept up to date, which I think is unique for most schools. Um, we are a Division III school, so uh, transfer students are welcome to participate in our athletics as well. And then, as I mentioned earlier, we have our equestrian program. We do have an equine study certificate, so you're, if you're interested in maybe pre-vet or you want to run a barn, um, you could do that. It's a, um, the equivalent of a minor here at Sweetbriar. And then uh, we are affordable. We're a private school, but there's um, lots of assistance available for students. Um, we do merit scholarships just based off of your college GPA, and then you are eligible for the Virginia Tuition Assistance Grant, as well as the two-year college transfer grant um, for graduating with your associates um, and attending a private school in Virginia. So um, don't let sticker prices scare you. We can definitely um, get you where you need to go. 
The application is free. You can apply on our website or through the Common App. We'll just need your college transcripts to get you a decision. And we offer free transfer credit evaluations for our prospective transfer students. And this is our visit information. We're doing both in-person and virtual tours. Um, and we'd love to see you. And if you need anything from us, please reach out. We're happy to help. Jesse, thank you very much. And we will continue now. We have a question in the Q&A and anyone else who has questions, please uh, drop, use the Q&A button to do that. We'll continue now with the George Washington University. Thanks, Russ. Hi, everyone. My name is Lindsay Skeens. I am a Senior Assistant Director at the George Washington University, and I am the coordinator of our transfer process. Um, thank you so much for joining us tonight. I know it's probably a little tough on a Thursday night to um, commit to spending more time on Zoom, but we really appreciate your time. Um, if you have ever visited DC, you have probably at least seen part of our campus. Um, you just may not have known it. We are smack in the middle of all of the things that DC is known for. Um, from our campus, you can walk to the Kennedy Center, the White House, the National Mall, all the monuments, memorials, Smithsonian. Um, all of those will be an integral part of your campus experience at GW. We do have a second campus in the Fox Hall neighborhood of DC. It's a little bit more of a residential area. Um, and so that's a very traditional campus. Pretty red brick buildings, green grassy space, a fountain in the middle of the quad. Um, so exactly what a movie tells you a college campus should look like. So because we have these two campuses, we get to say we offer you the best of both worlds. Students will use both campuses. We have a shuttle that runs 24 hours a day, seven days a week between both campuses. And you're going to utilize them because we've got a library on both, housing on both, um, we have fitness facilities on both. Some of our athletic facilities are on the Mount Vernon campus. Some of them are on Foggy Bottom. Um, so our students are going back and forth pretty frequently. Um, as for housing, as I spoke about, we have housing on both campuses. Students are required to live on campus for three years and transferring students are part of that policy. If you live within a 40-ish mile radius of campus and you plan to commute from home, you can be exempt from that requirement. Otherwise, you will live in one of our 30 residence halls between these two campuses. Um, our meal plan is a little bit different as well, a little bit, um, a little bit different than you're going to find, okay, a lot bit different than you're going to find at a lot of different schools. Um, we don't have a cafeteria style dining hall. We partner with over 100 restaurants in and around campus um, that you will be able to use your meal plan at. Um, so if you do live on campus, you are going to be able to go to places like Whole Foods, Chipotle, um, Chick-fil-A, um, all of those are going to be as part of your meal plan. So it's um, exciting to be able to integrate the city into our student experience. As far as academics go, we have majors in everything from the fine and performing arts to the liberal arts, to the STEM fields, computer engineering, to everything in between. Um, we encourage students to also take classes across these disciplines because we're interdisciplinary at our core. Um, so we want you to get a really well-rounded education. Um, our entire list of majors can be found on our website and we're broken into seven different colleges and schools. On our transfer application on the Transfer Common App, you will apply to one of these schools. You don't have to declare a major on the application. You will declare a major once you come to campus. Other information about our application, um, we need transcripts from every college you've ever attended post high school. If you did dual enrollment in high school, we won't need that transcript, but any classes you took after you graduated high school, we will need that transcript. Um, you are a transferring student to GW if you've even taken one college class since graduation. Now, if you have at least 30 college level credits completed since high school graduation, um, at the time of the application, you won't need to send us your high school transcript. But if you have less than 30 college level credits completed at the time of application, we will also need your high school transcript as part of your application. We don't ever need SATs or ACT scores for transferring students, so you can leave that out of the process. We do need the college report, um, and that's going to be for your most recent college. Um, so that's available as a PDF on the Common App that will either go to your academic advisor or the registrar's office at your current school. And then you can send that to us or they can send that to us. 
If you go to our transfer admissions webpage, you can see details about our transfer scholarships. We have scholarships available for students who are starting in a fall semester, who are um, in the National Society of Collegiate Scholars, Phi Theta Kappa, Alpha Beta Gamma, um, Scottish Rite Organization, or who are intending to major in something in our School of Engineering and Applied Sciences. We also offer need-based aid using the FAFSA and the CSS profile. Um, otherwise, we are currently offering online visit opportunities. Um, so we have a virtual tour that you can take a look through. Um, Google Street View is also a great option because we're in the city. Um, you can just kind of walk around the Foggy Bottom neighborhood of DC via Google Street View. You can see actual people on there. Um, our virtual tour right now doesn't have um, actual people walking around by the way it's designed. Um, we also have online information sessions and we have a couple of information sessions coming up for transferring students um, to show you how you can determine one, if your transfer credits will transfer and two, if they will apply to GW. Also on our website are um, transfer credit equivalency charts. So if you would like to see if your transfer credits or if your current credits will transfer to GW, those are available. Um, and if you don't see your current school on there, you can just send us an email and we'll be happy to send those along. Um, so I think I'm not quite at six minutes, but I am about finished. Um, if you have any questions for me, please feel free to put them in the Q&A. I will be more than happy to answer those. Again, thank you so much for joining us this evening and I hope you have a great rest of the week. Lindsay, thank you very much. And we will move forward now in our next presentation. Be the representative from Longwood University. Hello everyone, how are you doing all today? My name is Walid, I'm an admissions counselor at Longwood University. And today I'm gonna to be talking to you a little bit about Longwood University and what Longwood University could offer to you. Uh, but before I get into that, uh, just a quick uh, overview of Longwood University. So Longwood University is located in Central Virginia. Uh, we are about one hour away from Richmond City. We're about three hours away from Washington DC and about two and a half hours away from Virginia Beach. We are a four year public liberal arts and sciences and we have about 5,000 students, undergraduate students. Our student to faculty ratio is about 14 to one and our average class size is about 18. But when you look at this number, average class size 18, what does it tell you? It tells you that along with university in a classroom, your professors will know you by your name, not just by a number in a classroom. Also, it tells you that all our labs are taught by professors. So you'll get the one-on-one -on -one time you need, which is very important in the learning process. Our ethnic diversity is about 20%. We have 70% female and 30% uh, male. We have students from more than 20 countries represented along with, and we have more than 100 majors, minors, and concentrations. Question, so what is Longwood is known for? What are the top five programs you guys offer? One will be education. When Longwood was founded in 1839, it was back in the day, now we're COVID, but back in the day, it was all female school to become teachers. So we are so big in education. Education is the only major on campus where the students will have to do at least three internships in order to graduate. So you'll do a lot of hands-on training and you'll go to school for a few experiences. Uh, number two will be our business administration program. Longwood is business administration program is accredited by something called the AACSP, which is the Association to Advanced Collegiate School of Business. And only 175 schools worldwide could maintain that accreditation and we are one of them. Number three will be our nursing program. We have a multi-million dollar simulation lab for nursing students. We have dogs that they practice on, they bleed, they give birth. It's really fascinating. And it's a direct entry program as well. Number four and number five will be our criminal justice program and our psychology program, just because of the number of the students who come out from those programs and get jobs and internships with like state or local police and some governmental agencies as well. All right. The next slide here talks a little bit about Lancer Life. So we are Division I school. Longwood University became NCAA Division I school in 2007, and we started competing in something called the Big South Conference in 2012. Uh, we have six sports for men and eight sports for women. Uh, 
the, the most popular sports we have for men will be basketball and for women will be uh, softball. Our softball team, actually the strongest team we have on campus, they won four of the last five Big South Conference Championships. So we are so competitive since we are division one. Uh, we have more than 100, 175 clubs and organizations on campus. So anything you can think of as a club, we do have it. For example, we have all male Akifullah group as a club. We have uh, all women rugby team as a club. And we also allow you, if you would like to start your own club, all it takes is eight other students and you can start your own club as well. We also have 22 fraternities and sororities on campus and uh, our, fitness, our health and fitness center here, the picture on the corner right, as you can see, we have rock climbing walls. We have like uh, indoor track. There's a lot of cool stuff in there. And we also allow you to rent a bike for an entire month and you can rent it back again once you return it. And you can, uh, you can bike the high bridge trail we have in Farmville, which is beautiful. All right, so how to apply to Longwood? Very simple. Number one is complete an application. How can I complete my application? You can go to the Common App, I'm sure you're all familiar with, or you can go to our own website, which is www.longwood.edu slash apply. Our application is very uh, user friendly and you can finish it in like 10 minutes. Okay, I completed my application. What is the next step? The next step is to send in your official transcript from every institution you have enrolled in after, high, after graduating from high school. All right, Waleed, question. Uh, what if I only have 18 college credits or less, less than 24? Can I still transfer to Longwood? And the answer is yes. The only thing is you will have to send in your official college transcripts of whatever number, uh, whatever number you have of uh, uh, college uh, credits and your high school official copy of your high school transcript as well. All right, another question, Waleed, how do I know if my credits will transfer or what, if that class will transfer or not? So two things you can do. You can use our transfer equivalency system and you can find that on our website or you can email me a, a copy of your unofficial, uh, a copy of uh, your unofficial uh, college transcript. You can send it to me and I can do an unofficial credits evaluation report for you. All right, so the cost here. So uh, if you are from Virginia, you'll be looking at about 25,000 a year. That's a whole package. So that's tuition, uh, housing, and uh, so tuition, a room and board. So a whole, a whole package for a whole year. All right, we'll leave question here. Do you offer any assistantships or scholarships? Yes, we do. We do offer scholarships in the form of housing awards. So we do offer housing award equivalent to $9,000. So you get to live pretty much, you get to live for free uh, for the spring and the uh, fall semester. All right, what if I wanna visit campus? Please go to, go along with the edu slash visit and you can schedule your uh, on-campus visit. We have on-campus visits and we have virtual visits as well. And if you have any questions, please put it in the chat now and feel free to email us or call us this is our contact information. Thank you so much. Waleed, thank you very much. And next up, uh, I will remind people that you can, as Waleed said, you can use the Q&A button, not just for Longwood, but questions for any of our reps tonight. Next up now, the representative from Capital Technology University. Okay, so hello everybody. Thank you for joining our session tonight. Um, my name is Elisa Mason. I am the Associate Director of Transfer Admissions with Capital Tech University. Today I am just going to share some information uh, generally about Capital as well as our transfer process. So I'm just going to go ahead and get started. Some info about Capital. We are the only university in the state of Maryland specifically dedicated to engineering, cybersecurity, computer sciences, and technology management degrees. These are the programs that we have at Capital. Um, I won't go through and name every single program off, um, but just keep in mind our most common are astronautical engineering, computer science, and cybersecurity. Um, these programs are ABED accredited. That is the accreditation that your employers are looking for your technology or engineering uh, degree programs to have. We're conveniently located with a little balloon on the map there. So we're located in Laurel, Maryland. It's halfway in between Baltimore and Washington, DC. This is a map of the regional career opportunities within these two metropolitan areas. 
Every pinpoint on the map represents a techno uh, technology company. Um, so as you can see, there are uh, quite a few opportunities for our students to get involved in as far as internships and employment goes. Some information about our transfer admissions requirements. We do prefer a minimum of a 2.2 GPA to apply to the program. You must have 15 or more transferable credits to be considered a transfer student. Uh, courses must be relevant to our curriculum in order to uh, transfer over. A grade of a C or higher is considered transferable and we typically accept a max of 70 semester credit hours to be transferred. Now for some information about military credits, we do award credit for military courses based on the American Council on Education's Guide to the Evaluation for Educational Experiences in the Armed Forces. Applicants must provide a joint service transcript to Capitol's admissions office when they apply. We are a participant of the Yellow Ribbon Program. It's basically a quali uh, allows qualifying veterans uh, the opportunity to attend one of Capital's undergraduate master's or doctoral uh, programs virtually tuition free, which is awesome. Uh, now I'm going to go over some information about our transfer evaluation process. So first, a student will request the evaluation via email or phone. Next, the admissions uh, office would review uh, the general education credits and then we will work with faculty to determine technical course transferability. Once the evaluation is complete, the student will receive an evaluation back via email attachment with the plan of study. Um, so you'll be able to see the courses that have transferred over within uh, your capital plan of study. So some information on why capital. Our average class size is 15. So we've got fairly small class sizes. Um, it allows you to get to know your professors and your peers and also do a lot of hands-on work within your classes. We offer a tuition cap. We cap tuition at 1%. Um, so that means we would never raise tuition by any more than 1% each year that you're at the school if they do decide to raise tuition. We do offer gener uh, generous scholarships. First, we have our merit scholarship. It's based on GPA and credits accrued at previous institutions. We've got a grid that starts at a 3.0 GPA and you do have the opportunity to earn up to 10,000 per year um, off of that grid. Next, we have our cyber scholarship. It's 20,000 over the course of four years, so 5,000 each year you're at Capital to study cybersecurity. You just need to attend a Capital Cyber Saturday event to be eligible for that. Uh, lastly, we have our first responder scholarship. Again, 20,000 over the course of four years. It is for dependents age 18 to 26 years old of an active duty first responder. Um, that is just our institutional aid through the admissions office at Capitol. We certainly have additional aid available through our financial aid office as well. We do have new apartment style residence halls. They just went up fall of 2018. They come in singles, doubles, and triples. More on our Capitol experience. We offer many unique major specific internships. With our great location halfway in between two tech hubs, Washington DC and Baltimore, um, it allows the school to have a lot of uh, great partnerships with uh, some surrounding employers. So these are, this is a, uh, not an all encompassing list, but just a few that our students do tend to go to. Most professors are still working professionals at Capital, so I'd say it definitely gives our students a leg up um, as far as uh, cutting, like they know what's going on within the field and they're very, um, they're very involved with getting our students in internships and jobs. Um, we do have access to any degree program for all qualified students. We do have a main focus with hands-on learning. So our students do graduate with knowing how to solve real world problems. Courses uh, do prepare students for certifications within their field. We require senior capstones and also offer labs for every major that students can get involved in so they can get some hands-on experience. Uh, last but certainly not least, we have our capital commitment. We do guarantee that you will get a job within 90 days of graduation within your field of study at a competitive salary. If you do not, you can come back and take up to 30 credits for free. 30 credits is a full year's worth of credits. Um, most students do not need it. We have a job placement rate above 80%. Um, but if you do need that, we certainly encourage you to utilize those resources. Um, I think I might be a little bit under the six minute mark here, but um, that's all I have for today. If anyone has any questions, please feel free to ask me through the chat. We do have a virtual information session coming up on this Saturday. If you're interested in learning more about our programs, we would love to have you. Thank you. Thank you very much.
at the six, six minutes almost exactly. And we will finish up this session with the representative from Averett University. All right, guys, let me go ahead and get things shared here. Again, my name is Matthew. I'm uh, the representative from Averett University. I'm the transfer counselor as well as associate director of admissions. Just want to welcome you all again tonight. Uh, just want to share some information about Averett, about Danville, about who we are. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. So who's Averett? So we are located here in Danville, Virginia. We're located in a suburban campus. Um, we actually have five campuses total located within Danville, Virginia. The reason for that is our campus is in the middle of one of the most historic parts of the state. Uh, so when we started growing, we could not start looking at people and saying, hey, we're going to start tearing down your 200-year-old uh, Victorian home. So we had to build campus outward. So we have a very unique uh, campus in that sense. We only have room for a thousand undergraduate students, uh, so we're fairly selective in that in that way as well. Uh, we we believe in a small school approach. It's just who we are. Uh, we have no intentions of, of of being a big school. Uh, so just kind of that's who that's what we believe in. Uh, we have an even breakdown of male to female, 50-50, So it's fairly unique in that sense. Uh, but also even more unique about our student body, we have about 30% diversity population here on campus, as well as an interna uh, international population about 11%. Uh, for a school our size, it's pretty unheard of. Uh, so which means that a lot of our students get to share um, in their educational experiences from students from all over the world and all over, all over walks of life. Being a small school, we have an average class size of about 10 to 12, uh, but when you get into your major, you can expect it to actually get smaller than that. Where is Danville? So I know um, most people don't, aren't familiar with Danville, Virginia, because it's not something you guys uh, will be passing through unless you're going to be going to Raleigh or Durham or something like that. Uh, so Danville is a small community with about 40,000 to 50,000 people who live here in the city. Uh, you're going to see a very energetic river district, um, a vibrant downtown lifestyle, um, as well as a very active lifestyle. People in Danville are active. We believe um, in taking care of ourselves. So you're going to see uh, probably one of the top ranked mountain biking trail systems in the state. Uh, you're going to see a lot of canoeing and kayaking um, right now, right here in the middle of our city. So it's not something you have to go out of town to do. Um, again, Danville is a diverse uh, community. We, we, we uh, take great pride in the fact that we, we have uh, people from all walks of life and all cultures here. Um, and that kind of translates into a very vibrant cultural and art scene, um, as well as entertainment. Um, so it's something um, that we enjoy here. But more importantly, you're going to notice that Danville, we have a service mentality. We believe in taking care of one another. Um, historically, we were known as the, as the city of churches, um, but that not necessarily who we, not necessarily who represents who we are anymore. We just, we like to serve each other. So um, that's part of your experience here at Averitt as well. So kind of getting right into student life of here at the university. So what we believe in is we have what's called a, a set office with the student engagement team. So yes, we have clubs and orgs and you can start your own club and org like in most schools, but we actually kind of treat everyone as part of the community. So we have kind of a, as corny as it might sound, a be apart from the start approach, which like everyone is included. Um, while they're here on campus. That includes commuter students and transfer students as well. Um, also, I mentioned we, we believe in a service approach here. So we have a service-based student body through our community center. Um, this will be part of your experience here. So you can imagine um, types of community service and things on those lines. But what that means is no matter where you live and where you start your career, we want you to be an active requirement of hours to save you lots of time and money. Um, you're also going to see a ranked sports medicine program that's going to offer internships with pretty much every professional sporting uh, team out there. The, the very first female head athletic trainer for Major League Baseball is actually Avery alumni. Uh, so, it, so we just because of our connections to the industry, um, you're going to see a very strong program there. Uh, nursing as well as health sciences, uh, where you're going to see actually guaranteed admissions to med school at three different campuses, um, everywhere from Auburn to Blacksburg. Uh, so as well as a nursing program, it's a full four-year BSN. Now, the thing about our nursing program that's a little unique is the fact that we don't allow students who aren't ready for nursing to apply into our program. So you might see other nursing programs are going to have, they're going to be super competitive. Um, but for us, we only allow those students who are ready for the program to apply. So as long as you have the grades, you're going to actually get a spot into our nursing school. Uh, so that's a little unique um, as well. Um, also, and we were founded at Educators College, as most schools were. But um, we actually can guarantee jobs. We have a 100% job placement rate in education. And the reason for that is because of our proximity to schools. So you're going to have a, a high school right across the street. So if you're looking to teach secondary education 
or if even elementary education, you're gonna have a middle school and a uh, elementary school kind of right, right in the community as well, literally within walking distance. Um, and lastly, to kind of round us unique programs, we also have an equestrian program. Um, ours is actually a full uh, four year or two year for you guys as transfer, a, a major in, in equestrian studies. Most of the students are studying either equine management and they're looking to go in more of the business and the industry of equine science, or they're also gonna do equine science as far as pre-vet. Uh, we have, uh, I think there's currently five vets who take care of our horses. So those students will actually have all those shadowing hours built in uh, to their major. Now, we, we take great pride in athletics. A lot of times division three athletics, lots of people like to look at it as a fun kind of experience. We have a mentality that what's fun is winning. Uh, so you're gonna see 16 NCAA division three teams. Um, you're also gonna see competitive dance and cheer. Uh, we were the first school in the state to start a varsity esports team. Uh, so we compete in that as well, as well as competitive riding teams. We only ride uh, venting and dressage. So for those who weren't ride Western, we apologize. Uh, but again, uh, kind of what you're going to see. Now, I kind of want to explain Athletics 3-2-1 vision because it's kind of the vision for us as a university. So the 3 2, one what it means is we expect 3.0s in the classroom. So we have a little bit higher academic standard uh, for our student athletes than most other schools. Uh, we also hold our, our coaches to a higher, higher standard. So we're expecting to be first or second in conference in every single one of our sports and our disciplines, as well as the one part of that philosophy is we treat all sports here equitable. So whether you play football, uh, whether you play women's tennis, every, every team is given the same resources, every team is treated the same. Um, so there's, there's equity amongst our, our student athletes here at the university. So transfer day, let's get into it. So free application, we don't, we don't fully need to make money off you guys applying to college. Uh, so easy knockout, it's gonna take you about 10 minutes to do. Um, for transferring, you need at least uh, one semester uh, transfer on credit hours. That's typically gonna mean 12 to 15. Some students will take up to 18 their first semester. Uh, but typically we just require one semester. And all of them we're gonna require is official transcripts from all, all the colleges you've attended. Uh, we're gonna kind of go through that with you all. If, if you attend the Virginia Community College system, you have at least a 2.0. We can guarantee admissions for you all, um, but we do require at least a 2.5 from other universities. Now, our average incoming transfer GPA is usually around 3.5 to 3.7. So um, again, kind of a little bit of higher academic standard in that sense, but we do uh, kind of work with all students. Financial aid, uh, quickly about this, we believe in trying to make a private school affordable um, and for everyone. So we're gonna offer merit scholarships to every single student who's offered admissions to the university. We, uh, regardless of, what, of your income, we encourage families to file FAFSA because we award additional assistance outside of that. Um, the VTAG program here in Virginia as well. And so I usually stress to families when it comes to financial aid, private schools are gonna have sticker shock uh, when you look at the initial price, but when you're willing to work through those and not necessarily the same budget restraints as other school, other places, um, you're gonna find that private schools are flexible. Uh, so we're willing to help you guys out. If you have conversations, you're willing to have a conversation with us about finances. Like I said, you're gonna, you're gonna probably see some additional assistance or additional help in that sense. Visit Aver, we believe the best thing in making your college decision is seeing the college campus. You would not buy a car or an apartment or anything along those lines without walking through them or test driving them. So same thing with the college. Um, so, we are actually seeing students on campus currently, so we encourage you guys to come check things out like that. Also, you can check out our virtual visits as well as our virtual tour. Um, we actually award grant money to students who, have, who visit campus, uh, so that's an additional way to pick up some easy scholarship money. Um, also, you're gonna find that our president is gonna be a big part of your experience here, so you're gonna have a Q&A with her. Um, just to kind of give you an example of that, what I mean by that is every single student is gonna have a personal dinner with our president and her husband at their home uh, with their in their first year. So whether transfer or not, you're actually gonna sit down in the president's home and have dinner with them. They just wanna hear about your experience. Uh, so that's a really cool thing we have here as well. So I kind of wrapped up what I had, uh, but again, if you guys have questions, we're here to help and we look forward to, uh, to helping you guys through your college experience. Thank you, Matthew. And thank you to everyone for joining us uh, this evening. When you close your window, there'll be a link to a very quick four question survey. We'd appreciate any feedback you can provide. And this is just one of many sessions being hosted. So be sure to sign up for additional sessions at strivescan.com slash Virginia. And in about a week, you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as all the other session recordings, strivescan.com slash Virginia. Thank you for attending and thank you for everyone for presenting. Have a good evening. <laughs>